Hello everyone! Finally, the moment that we all had been waiting for has finally came, and the second part of episode 72 got released just a few hours ago. And in this video, I'm going to show you all the details and Easter eggs that I managed to find and let me tell you beforehand that this episode was literally one of the most epic and unpredictable ones we've seen so far. What kinds of new upgrades did G-Man get and who will come out victorious out of this battle? Who is this new powerful character Boom talked about just yesterday? Where did the Titans fly away? And what's the most important? What's going to happen in the next episode after such a heated battle we saw? So if you want to find every secret in the episode, then get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end, not to miss anything important because it's going to blow your mind for sure. Let's go! So the episode starts with the events of the previous episode, and we also see the scene where G-Man communicates with this skibidi welder, once again giving him some sort of orders. And as the episode will be progressing, you'll understand what exact orders was this skibidi welder supposed to deliver. And of course, the scene where this poor bug finds him demise in futuristic claws of Astro Toilet repeats itself too, so the orders won't be delivered in time to whoever was supposed to receive it. But as we'll see later in this episode, it didn't hurt G-Man and his plans much. But let's talk about it all step by step. But before we do that, don't forget to give this video a like because I appreciate it a lot and subscribe to my channel as I really want to achieve my goal in having 500,000 subscribers. Okay, if you are subscribed now, let's move on. Astro Toilet repeats his threat from the previous episode once again about how G-Man will get justifiably punished for his treason without being able to escape it. And in response to this, G-Man smirks menacingly and blasts all of his laser guns at the same time. As I have told multiple times in my previous videos already, this big boy is determined to show all of his battle colors this time, and it won't be pretty for anyone who will get on his way. And unfortunately for Astro Toilet, the target who's standing on G-Chad's way is himself, so that one of the most epic battles in the history of Skibidi Toilet series begins. And oh yeah, just in case you forgot about it somehow, we're still watching everything that unfolds in front of our eyes from the perspective of the iconic Mecha cameraman, who's also one of my forever favorite characters, by the way. And keep this information in mind for now because it'll be important for you to remember about him later in this video. After G-Man blasts all of his guns into Astro Toilet's face, the enemy feels the necessity to cover himself up in order to not get fried as a McDonald's chicken. He uses his claws for that purpose, and as it turns out, they are capable of fulfilling the same kind of functions as a proper shield. It's really great to have multifunctional weapon in your arsenal, don't you guys think so too? And I think that these claws work in a really peculiar way because it doesn't seem to me that they simply repel the G-Man's lasers, but instead they sort of absorb their power, and I'll also develop my thought about it a little later in this video, as the events of this episode will get progressing. So when he stops absorbing the laser's energy, he then slowly spreads his two claws and then lifts up the third one, which builds up the impulse and then hits the target with the very same laser beam and just the concept of somebody else's power absorption, and then using it to hurt the opponent seemed really similar to the abilities of the villain from the movie X-Men First Class. And then the turn comes for G-Man to show his new fancy shield. So he activates the yellow energy-like power shield that reminded me a lot of the yellow shield that Elite Clockman used in the secret scene from Dom Studios' latest episodes. And I think that G-Man is able to generate this shield with the usage of these two side instruments near his temples, or maybe it's his core itself that helps him generate such a thing from his combat arsenal. Before that, I had suspicion that it may be glasses G-Man generates the shield with, but later in this episode we'll see how the glasses will get initially broken, and G-Man is still able to use his shield in such circumstances, so it must be his core or two of these little laser-like things on his head. But it looks like Astro predicted such a move from him, so right in the next second he releases the black tentacles with the red spots on them in order to dig into G-Man's shield and pull him closer to Astro so that he would be able to wreck our laser boy up in the melee combat. So in response to this, G-Man pulls a really smart move in my opinion. He basically turns turbines on his jetpack to the side and literally pushes off of Astro Toilet so that even his powerful tentacles aren't strong enough to catch this G-Chad but notice those clots of yellow energy around the tentacles. It looks like Astro took G-Man's shield energy for himself that way, and that's pretty damn cool if you ask me. After that, G-Man pulls out something even crazier, and when I saw this for the first time, I literally gad my jaw dropped. 
He gets his head equipped in this absolutely stunning helmet that seems to be just unbreakable at first sight. And this helmet reminded me of multiple things, and it is approved to me right now that Boom definitely gets inspired by some of the Skibidi multiverses from other creators. This helmet looks like a combination of SWAT mask that military wears for special types of operations, and it also reminds me of the mask that G-Man from Verlance's Skibidi Wars wears. And it's not the only thing that made me remember about Skibidi Wars Multiverse by Verlance, and you'll see what I mean as you'll keep watching this video. So after G-Man got himself prepared for any kind of trouble, one of the most epic scenes in the history of Skibidi toilets unfolds on your screen. The G-Man's and Astro Toilet's lasers cross one another and collide, creating a powerful mix of different energies. And of course, this scene reminded me a lot of the final confrontation between Harry Potter and Voldemort from the movie called Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. And just as in this exact scene, the final impulse goes closer to Astro Toilet first and then to his opponent, and it looks like our Jimmy is meant to lose this time. But then suddenly the reinforcements arrive to his aid. And it looks like they were supposed to come even earlier because that's probably what G-Man had told to the little Skibidi welder before. But this guy didn't have an opportunity to report this to the Skibidi army as it got destroyed by Astro Toilet afterwards. But the reinforcements finally came anyways, and to tell you honestly guys, these little Skibidi kamikaze on white planes with giant piles of explosives on their backs looked like Boom decided to reference one of the most well-known and tragic dangerous events in history, but let's not go way too deep into that, you know. So then, Astro Toilet endures several rapid attacks from Skibidi Kamikaze, and it seems like he finally got overwhelmed by the amount of fire happening around him. So in this shot, we can see how he cuts the laser connection between him and G-Man, pushing himself away in order to retaliate and come up with another strategy. And by the way, how he pushed G-Man's laser away looked like a powerful sound wave that usually speaker men use and it may be possible that Astro Toilets could have adopted some of the Alliance's technology as they collaborated with Skibidi for a while. But I also allow possibility of Astro Toilets having the ability to push their enemies away in the first place, as their fraction seems superior to Skibidi Toilets anyway. Then Astro Toilet turns around quickly and uses the energy from two of his claws as if he had huge yellow katanas in his possession. And of course, this resemblance made me remember my belowed speaker woman once again. But Oh well, let's not talk about that now and get back to this Astro Toilet. When he was busy dealing with all those Skibidi Kamikaze G-Man didn't leave him a gracious opportunity to finish his business with no hurries, and instead he blasted his back with all his laser might, which of course didn't go unpaid for Astro Guy. He gets heavily pushed to the ground, and then he gets up slowly all battered up and bruised. Oh boy, I can bet this guy didn't taste such humiliation for a really long freaking time, so props to G-Man who got finally strong enough to do that. Astro seems to get really angry now, and then he says, Enough games. And honestly, guys, the arrogant villains always behave in that way. Firstly, they're showing off and bragging how they're about to end you in one snap of fingers. But then, boom, they're suddenly starting begging you to stop playing on hardcore and give them a rest. The real battle begins now, but at first, both opponents decide to make some pretty stupid moves, in my opinion. Just watch for yourself. G-Man shoots Astro with just one laser, and of course the super speed freak dodges it easily. So what was the point of releasing just one laser in the first place? And in turn Astro also does something really silly as he starts smacking G-Man's head with his bare claws, which is obviously protected by a very mighty helmet. Guys, you're kinda wasting my time in here, so please get serious. Well, okay, then something more intimidating for G-Man occurs. Namely that Astro Toilet somehow manages to throw off the helmet off his head and replicate the exact same scene from episode 60, which was also spoiled to us by Boom in his Instagram post. It looks like Astro is about to make the same intentions from that episode to come true and drill G-Man's skull to bits, but Jimmy certainly isn't in the mood for that crap. So he opens his mouth and releases a powerful hysterical sound wave which is so strong that it's not only able to push arrogant Astro back, but also affect Mecha Cameraman's protective lens a little, as we saw intermissions on the POV screen. And it looks like G-Man appropriated this ability from Speakerman's race, the same way Skibidi scientists stole TV Men's ability to teleport. It's possible that this sound wave technique could have been learnt by G-Man when Titan Speakerman was infected and controlled by the Parasite and fought on the side of Skibidi Army. Plus, we've seen the old speakers that used to belong to this Titan in the secret room at the Skibidi Bunker. 
So it's apparent that lots of technologies were explored by Skibidi, which now made Skibidi toilets even somehow superior to the Alliance, and let me tell you that it doesn't happen every day. The enraged G-Man rushes towards Astro Toilet, and oh my god, I've never seen him so crazy before! Astro Toilet tries to keep the distance from this furious psycho, and then strikes back in the very similar way the Glitch Toilet attacked earlier in the series. And by the way, I am still hoping to see the appearance of either old or new Glitch Toilet again because I really loved seeing that guy in action. Meanwhile, Astro Toilet decided to use the stealth tactics instead, so he sneaks up on G-Man from the back and tries to chop his head off for good. But G-Man is not called a Chad in this episode for nothing. He reacts at lighting speed and responds in the same way he already did in one of his first appearances in the series when somebody also tried to sneak up on him and flush him. The furious fight keeps heating on, and when G-Man strikes Astro Toilet with his lasers again, the enemy decided to demonstrate his ability to absorb and transfer somebody else's energy once again and hits G-Man back with two ball lightnings that were created out of G-Man's laser's energy. Astro says that G-Man has to give up and that it's over for him. And in response, the cold-blooded G-Man releases a ball lighting that goes towards Astro at extremely slow speed, and of course Astro is not in fact smart enough to understand that it's clearly a trap. He catches the ball with his right claw and asks if that's all that G-Man is capable of, and as he returns the favor to the giver, G-Man releases another two balls which this time have some special juice in them. And this special juice is clearly a mix of Skibidi technologies and TV Men's purple glow that made their opponents to reap their heads off. And that's exactly what happens to Astro right now. Astro tries to fight this horrifying desire back, but it clearly doesn't work. So he pieces his jaw with his left claw, although at first sight it may look like he pierced his whole head. It looks like it's nearly the end for the battered up Astro. And it's time for Psychotic G-Man to finish him off once and for all. But then happens something that Boom told us just yesterday about. The new, absolutely monstrous character appears. And oh my god, it's not one of the Titans or Skibidi as we thought earlier, but it's a whole damn Astro Gigachad. And by the way, his design in general reminded me a lot of the Toilet Emperor's design from Skibidi Wars Multiverse that was created by Verlance. Just compare these images for yourself. And for now, let me just remind you that I have a specific channel where I also analyze different multiverses, Verlance's included, which is called Teleotosi, so check it out after you'll finish watching this analysis. He looks absolutely insane. And his shield also reminded me of the shield that Titan Cameraman used before episode 65. And just when it looked like the tables turned, and G-Man is going to be the one to lose, another thing happens that Boom also told us about one day before today's episode release. The Titans show up to the party, and it seems like Astro Verlance is not here to keep up with this mess. So instead he grabs his unlucky younger brother and dashes away as if nothing happened. And he's not the only one to leave the battlefield, because as G-Man gets heartily greeted by both Titan Speakerman and Titan TV Man at once, he decided to pull a screw you all. Move and flies away as well, which is his classic strategy, actually. Titan TV Man then says, this pull will die quick. And then he addresses Titan Cameraman with the phrase, I wait message. Which implies that Titan Cameraman is now the head of their trio, and it's up to him to decide further where to go and what plan to have. In response to this, the Blue Chad gets the fallen claw of the beaten Astro Toilet and attaches it to his right hand. And honestly, I already got used to him playing in Lego with his own robotic body. And then the history gets made, as Titan Cameraman says the very first phrase in the entire series, and it sounds like, For Plunger. For Plunger. It's clear to me that our Blue Lens Chad is filled with desire to avenge his little brother. And that's why the other two Titans decided to give the leadership into his interchangeable hands. And that's how this episode ends. Oh my god, it was really epic. And the way the new powerful character was introduced was simply unforgettable as well. I'm really curious what happens next in this series, but it's clear to me that Titans will continue to chase G-Man to avenge for all their fallen comrades, and that we'll also start seeing more and more Astro Toilets after this episode. And that was all for today! Write in the comments below about how excited you are to see the 73rd episode, and be sure to subscribe to my channel not to miss my new videos. And also to my Discord, where you can contact me directly and get lots of information for my subscribers only. And that was me, Isotoilet. See ya!